Hello, Congress. Nice to see you again. Uh, and as usual, we only frontmen of SCADA Strange Life team, and I know there are a lot of guys who help to make this talk. So if uh, it's okay, please give hands to all SCADA Strange Life team. Traditionally, we start our talk from the battle map when we show how many ICS systems connected to internet. But this time, we will skip this because of John. John, who built the Shodan, uh, this year published excellent resource, icsmap.shodan.io, and you can download and check a lot of different ICS system connected to the internet. And because John said thank to us, we say thank to John because he is an excellent guy, and thank you, John, again. But uh, last year, uh, after our talk, we received a lot of questions about this picture, about different type of connected system. And people said, okay, this is not ICS, this is some kind of honeypots maybe, or it's, it's not serious, it's very small devices. Uh, and um, it's not serious at all. So we decided to go deeper and check first one. IPC chip. IPC chip is a, a system on the chip uh, which run a real-time operating system uh, with TCP IP, web server, and security, security protocols. We love it. So we start to Google, uh, start from just a system name. We found that uh, it have built-in CGI server with uh, uh, some built-in function, and during this assessment, we found interesting application of this chip. It's solar lock system. Uh, what is solar lock? Solar lock is a um, uh, kind of smart grid SCADA, small grid, uh, small SCADA which you can install in your uh, ho house to manage a TV plant, which you can install on the roof of your house, but it generates about uh, seven uh, gigawatts of instant output, and at the moment, uh, about one million inverters connected to this system. Interesting. Uh, because this system connects to some kind of the cloud, you can use it to find installations. No via showdown, via boring network scanning, just visit the portal and check it. So it's, this is Germany, and uh, this is different location of the uh, installed systems. And also it have some kind of, um, I don't know, social networking uh, features, so you can take a picture of your house, of your PV plant, share with your friend and say, oh, I'm saving uh, uh, energy I generated from my uh, house uh, personal power plant. But this is all about, you know, funny stuff. Let's go more uh, deeper in technique side of this system. Okay, so it doesn't work? Oh, it's work, okay, thanks. Well, uh, first interesting thing, uh, it's firmware. It's kind of software that gives you a lot of information how device works. Uh, obviously, I think you know what it is. What it is. And uh, most interesting things in firmware, it's uh, configuration scripts, uh, file system structure, and so on. And firstly, to find uh, out through, for example, Google Docs, in simple case, you can use uh, just uh, Unix strings and grab. For example, in this case, to grab title, and as a result, uh, through Google, you can uh, find a lot of solar log uh, devices connected to to internet. It's about uh, 65,000. Of course, all of them are connected to internet and cached by Google. Well, and uh, let's take a look on the authentication uh, page uh, of the solar log uh, web server. Simply, it's a poor authentication scheme, uh, just only using uh, password. All page uh, using uh, password authentication, 
but uh, if you know uh, appropriate full URL to download uh, system backup, it's not uh, a required password. Simply <laughs> download. Well, just simply download system backup file, and what's most interesting thing in backup, it's of course username and passwords. <laughs> well, uh, on this picture you can see uh, simple encryption and all things that you need to decrypt. Another one, uh, typical process for firmware and devices, it's uh, firmware update. Well, uh, following SolarLog uh, update process, you can see that it's highlighted part. On the screenshot, you can give uh, a full path to system. If you know uh, what uh, file system structure, simply it's a DOS operation system, li like a DOS, yes, sure. And you can override system files, configuration files, and so on. So it was fixed. Uh, it was fixed with uh, collaboration with uh, uh, computer emergency response team of um, a German government and uh, thank them. But you know, because uh, this is just a platform, I guess that there are a lot of different uh, producers, manufacturers, vendors who use this platform to build other devices. So I'm not sure that all of these simple bugs was fixed. Uh, it was a funny story, but you know, uh, we forgot about it, already forgot, but one day I saw this Twitter. Uh, and I understood that maybe solar panels are not so renewable. And uh, maybe we should uh, use our power, our knowledge, uh, to save sun. So uh, we decide to understand uh, a bit more about uh, all this green energy. And if you want to get new, uh, new knowledge, what you should do? You should go to Germany, to Gamburg, to Congress Center, but not uh, at Congress, but to Wind Energy. Gamburg. So we uh, virtually visit, uh, visit this uh, uh, exhibition and got a lot of information on different wind and solar equipment. And start from the simple stuff. Showed on again, uh, we found a very common system, sunny web box. As you can see, simple Shodan uh, search uh, give us about uh, 80,000 of devices connected to the internet. Alex? Well, uh, first notice about Sunny Webex uh, default password was three years ago in full disclosure list. It was default uh, SMA uppercase password. It's first type of the password. Okay, so we decided to read the first manual, of course, and we noticed that uh, username installer has a different as previously mentioned uh, password, it's SMA uh, lowercase. Okay, so we decided to go deeper to read in the first manual, and we find out that uh, it has um, user and installer groups, usernames, and different passwords. It only c contains uh, numbers. Okay, so what's the real, what's the true password at the final? At the final? And, uh, Real researchers, real hackers, trying to give it your, by your hands, and uh, we discovered interesting things in firmware that uh, it contains not only user and installer password, it has uh, also service and developer uh, system accounts, uh, and also it has interesting strings, interesting password uh, mode, like uh, hard-coded passwords. So uh, we can say what password is, because it's hard-coded, very hard. Uh, <laughs> but uh, what we can say, that uh, quick Google search for these devices allow by analyzing of uh, responses, because on the response you can find amount of energy generated by this device, uh, allow you to find about um, 100 of, uh, megawatts of energy. If we compare two different uh, uh, generators, uh, like uh, hydroelectric station, it's like uh, small 
uh, Elpin uh, Hydroelectro Station near Selamzi in Austria. So, this amount of energy generated by solar rock can be found via Google. But via Shodan and different types of uh, for internet scanning, you can find 20 times more energy if you need the power. Uh, but it's all about sun. Let's talk about wind. Because you know all this big uh, stuff, I think it's killing wind. Uh, so, uh, simple stuff, again, very simple stuff. Uh, I found very old uh, storage show and search, uh, which uh, helps me to find about 300 of systems. Uh, name of the system is Nordic, uh, Nordex uh, NC2. Uh, just a uh, uh, quick search of uh, vulnerabilities in this system. On this system, uh, demonstrate that uh, it, this system have a long story of vulnerabilities. Starting from uh, 2010 uh, and uh, finishing 2013. Uh, what's interesting, uh, I think those vulnerability not patched. Why? Because uh, if we check response of this service, we can find that this server uh, works on the uh, system uh, which uh, already deprecated. So it's a uh, version number three web server of this web server, uh, JT web server, uh, current version in uh, number nine. Also, it works on the very, very old version of SCADA. Simple CVS uh, details search uh, demonstrate that since 2002, people publish uh, information about vulnerabilities in this web service. So uh, I don't want to talk about vulnerabilities in, in MAMA real to real recorder. It's, uh, it's, it's even not script kiddie stuff. Uh, but uh, if you want to understand how it's look in real life, I took two pictures from Google. Uh, one picture is uh, uh, Nordex uh, wind tube, and second is management interface. Only for Google, it's not real. Uh, so, how much energy we can get in this case? Uh, about one uh, gigawatt. So if we compare with, with different generation, it's absolutely the same, like, uh, uh, help me, <laughs> it's uh, Stuxnet was in Iran on Boucher nuclear plant, the same. So uh, anybody who know how to read, uh, well, uh, how to read uh, Adwinder, there is can write on Stuxnet now. So. Just to finish this part of the, our talk, uh, by simple, very simple vulnerabilities, we found about uh, eight gigawatts of uh, instant power energy. If we compare it with uh, uh, most famous, uh, most powerful hydroelectro station, it's number five on the list. It's, it, it took two days after the war. So, let's continue our saga, uh, sorry, uh, and talk a little bit about our famous vendor. Uh, what the similarities between Large Hadron Collider uh, and, uh, uh, for instance, gas pipe? It's a semantic WinCC open architecture. It's very popular HMI, uh, quite new system, uh, but it also has new web server. I think if you was on our previous talk last year, you can remind this picture. This is a uh, history of bugs in Apache web server. Why are we talking about it? Because if you going to write your own web server, please carefully review uh, all vulnerabilities discovered uh, during pre <laughs> when other guys wrote own web servers. Uh, just to remind the history of different funny web, web vulnerabilities. Uh, this was discovered 
several years ago, if you uh, send incorrect HTTP request to web server without HTTP body, it can crash. Uh, uh, about uh, it was, well, this was discovered in uh, 2000, uh, in year 2000, in Internet Information Server, uh, and you can use uh, path traversal to read, write different folders. I think you can remind with vulnerabilities uh, was related to one uh, worm, and uh, another one uh, related to incorrect content LAN, so you can put big amount of data, but say it is very short, so you can never write memory. Why I'm talking about this old stuff now? Uh, because I want to show you a small movie. Just a second. Here it is. Oh. So, Let's uh, launch WinCC and the debugger uh, to see all the process and uh, submit very complex request with uh, thousands of AAA, a lot of AAA. <laughs> what we will get? We will get break with typical 31, 31, 31, 31. I think it's AAA also. Uh, but if you will send, <laughs> okay, if you will send a more complex request, what we get? Calculator. I think SCADA. <laughs> SCADA must have ability to calculate something. Uh, for sure, it was fixed. Uh, we don't disclose uh, zero days, uh, but I like this uh, command. So, if uh, certain update to version 3.12 of Semantic WinCCOA, we can stop a uh, terrorist who clearly evil genius accessing Launch Hadron Collider and create a black hole that will shallow up the world. So, we save the universe. <laughs> Let's take a uh, time machine and come to the past, uh, to the Miami at the SFO conference. It's a conference de uh, dedicated to SCADA safety and security. And um, what we show when, uh, on this conference, uh, this slide, I think you also can remind it, uh, demonstrate overage uh, age of the libraries included in WinCC HMI. So you can see that most of the uh, HMI was compiled before the Stuxnet. Uh, and on this conference, we demonstrate how to find zero day using find. So uh, you just uh, get the list of the uh, files on, in uh, software and try to find most old one. Uh, in this, we found OpenSSL, compiled in 2007. And we say to Siemens, guys, let's update your software. And this was a mistake. Why? Because old version of OpenSSL uh, does not uh, have hard bleed vulnerability. And after update, it, we get hard bleed vulnerability and uh, large hadron collider get hard bleed. Just for, to demonstrate how it's work, uh, nothing special, but I'm sorry. So we run in a uh, standard uh, hard bleed handler which uh, require memory from the uh, SSL server, and trying to authenticate with username and password, and get uh, username and password from the server because of hard bleed vulnerability. Uh, it's a 
base64 uh, encoded, so we need to decode it. <coughs> and uh, let's try again. We've stolen username and password. It should work. Here it is. So, uh, simple vulnerability, everybody know about it. Not so simple, but white no, yes? And uh, what I want, wh why I show this demo? To highlight one important thing. Uh, people can ask me, okay, first you say, please don't write your own web server. But after you say it, please don't use third party components. What to do? I don't have answer. <laughs> but anyway, if you decide to write on the uh, server or to use third party components, please care about security. If you include, I don't know, OpenSSL uh, or bus shell in your software, Please update it, please check it, please care about it. Xander? Well, uh, so another one, uh, vulnerability to its long story. Uh, it, about a SQL injection that was first published one and a half year ago. It was simply a SQL injection uh, via arbitrary SQL commands uh, with unspecific vectors. SQL injection, unspecific vectors. Well, what does it mean? I don't know. <laughs> okay, well, and Cisco give us excellent decision how to avoid this vulnerability. Simply deny connections to web server ports. <laughs> well, okay, it works, sometimes it works, but SCADA components, uh, industrial control system components, it's, uh, it has a lot of protocols, communication processes, it depends on functionality, and in this case, WinCC server has not only SYN client, it also has a SIG client. Well, it works uh, on uh, RPC protocol, and well, firstly, when we try to authenticate, we noticed uh, clear text messages. Uh, as you can see, it's user year and next uh, password year. Well, it's uh, clear text, but uh, uh, we spent a few minutes, uh, and after we noticed that uh, authentication data uh, goes uh, to WinCC server uh, on the different port, and uh, it's not clear text. Well, where is uh, password? It's no uh, clear text. Uh, maybe it looks like uh, some encryption. Yeah, it's kind of encryption. And I think everybody who uh, saw our previous talk uh, already know encryption key. You're right, this is my encryption key. Uh, but uh, this was fixed, and it was fixed with new encryption key. <laughs> and first of uh, you who guess new lead encryption key, give lead price or free beer from Skada Strange Gav team. Huh? Secret key? No. <laughs> it's lead. Good guess, but not right. <laughs> Excellent answer. But it's very lead. <laughs> okay, uh, first of you who said uh, 32 uh, new key and something else, come on after. Uh, the talk on the stage, I had a lot of souvenirs, but uh, this is lead encryption key. <laughs> but this was fixed, again. <laughs> we does not check it yet. And another one interesting story, it's about uh, cookies. 
And so once upon a time, we try and to discover interesting things, uh, authentication on a semantic, uh, Siemens semantic PLC <coughs> controller. And we discovered it interesting thing that uh, cookies uh, contains uh, constant parts and uh, changeable uh, big part of the cookie. Okay, so we decided to go deeper and to understand what's going on with cookies. And, uh, well, it's uh, first big biggest party of the cookie, it's uh, MD5 of some value. Well, so what about its value? Uh, after spending some time to reverse engineering uh, uh, PLC controller firmware, we found out that MD5, it's uh, from the cookie, with 26 bytes of all the cookie and uh, 16 bytes of the secret. And plus uh, two bytes of uh, null. Well, what's about secret? Uh, usually secret generates, it's a typical practical, practical approach, secret generates after PLC start and it uses uh, PRNG. PRNG was uh, a little bit harder than a standard uh, C PRNG generator and uh, C it was uh, two bytes value. Well. It's time to brute force, uh, as you can see, but it's too much uh, values uh, to brute force because PLC is so tender. And what about seed? Seed very often, it's uh, also a typical approach. It's very often depends on time value. And by our practical uh, research, it was uh, PLC start time plus some constant value. Well, uh, constant value using uh, current time. Uh, well, uh, next step was how to obtain PLC uh, start time. It's obvious that we can use values from a web server page, it's current value, and uptime. Uptime we can get through SNMP request. Great. It's time for demo, and as a result, Once again, oh, just a second. Okay, it started. Well, I'm not a master of movie maker. I should improve my skills. Well, let's imagine that attacker connected to entire network. Let's ensure that uh, attacker on the network uh, one, for example. And first of all, we try to find out devices that support Profinet protocol. We find a uh, PLC controller, and you can see that it, it, it has a different than attacker side uh, IP address. Okay, let's ensure that it's not accessible. Next step, uh, it's using a Python script to change uh, network settings on PLC controller using a Profinet, uh, special, specially crafted Profinet request. Well, we provide to Python script uh, destination MAC address, our source MAC address. Well, it's a simple way to get your MAC address of your network interface. And uh, uh, provide uh, network settings uh, for new uh, network, on, network settings on PLC controller. Simply it's IP address, uh, network mask, and a gateway. Don't type too fast. Two, two. Yeah. Well, we got, uh, we received answer. It's cool. Well, let's ensure again that uh, network settings changed on PLC controller. Well, we bring, it, it means that we bring a PLC controller to our local uh, subnet. It's accessible. Great. So the next step, let's imagine uh, it's one of the dependency of vulnerability. Uh, that uh, let's imagine that uh, real uh, user, uh, for example, uh, SCADA engineer, uh, going through browser to PLC controller and uh, simply authenticated using a login and username, real login and username. Okay, who guess what the password? Star, 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 star. Well, you can see that uh, controller, or, uh, controller uh, on the operating mode uh, run. Next. 
so we see that cookies stored on uh, browser. Well, it's the next uh, very important uh, step from attacker side. It get uh, very important values from controller. It's it range, and the final step it's uh, run a Python script to brute force cookie, and we provide to the script seed uh, seed values. Uh, it depends uh, on the how many times authenticated user on the controller. It can took uh, from few seconds to some minutes. Well, let's prepare. Let's clear our cookies. Everything real on this video. Well, we clear cookies and prepare to give to put new cookie values. It's still brute forcing. It's only one cookie with the name Siemens at a session and big value that we will give a little bit later. Okay, it's a typical scenario. No industrial process running, running at this moment uh, because people well, see brute force it, brute force it, brute force it. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, we found uh, we found two real cookie values, and I like CQ to send process. And the final, let's copy paste cookie value to the browser and. Reload the page and ensure that we are an authenticated user, administrator, and stop PLC, stop some process. Well, as you can see, uh, we don't need any username, password, and so on. Only connected uh, to our subnetwork, PLC controller. Thank you. Uh, what I want to highlight in this vulnerability, uh, for sure it was fixed, uh, but uh, here two points. First point, we found it because of Congress, because on, on 29C3 uh, we participate a workshop and uh, one of the guys who was on this workshop say, okay, did you check the cookies? They say, no. I don't believe it on small, such small device authentication process realize it correctly. So after this idea, we start working and find this vulnerability. It's already uh, fixed it. This okay. Uh, and second uh, thing I want to highlight it's uh, communication about SNMP communication. Uh, started from um, uh, uh, January, we have a long story of communication with Siemens about. SNMP hard-coded community. Uh, they say, uh, okay, this is not uh, issue, but in the end they say, okay, this is issue, because uh, via this vulnerability you can get the cookie. Uh, so what I want to highlight, uh, if you make something, please care about basic thing. Everybody works on SNMP v3 and don't, don't use uh, hard-coded password. Why to do it? on the new system like uh, uh, PLC uh, 100, 500, or 1,500. But please uh, don't think that we uh, hate Siemens or something. We're speaking a lot of, uh, about Siemens because now we're in Germany. If we will be in uh, French, we will speak about for, for Schneider Electric. If uh, we will be in US, we will speak about Honeywell. And you know, uh, really happiest day in my life when we get answers that vulnerabilities was fixes. It's uh, emails from Siemens product sort, and I can uh, I want to uh, thanks. Uh, Siemens, all the Siemens team, and especially Siemens product sort for hard job. And please give uh, them your hands. <laughs> and guys, if you hear, and I know you hear, uh, please catch me after the talk. I have souvenirs for you. <laughs> <laughs> 
So uh, this is uh, our uh, traditional slide with number of vulnerabilities discovered in uh, different platform. Uh, la for last two years, Siemens was the first, but now you can see that Schneider Electrics, because of mostly because of uh, acquiring of Invensys, uh, have a first place on the discovered and not patched vulnerabilities. And uh, many guy, uh, people asking us, how you, uh, what is your approach to discover so many vulnerabilities? Uh, I have an answer, because we're too lazy. Uh, this year we decide to not discover vulnerabilities by ourselves. We built big test bed uh, with real SCADA PLCs, uh, RTU system connected to Toil Railroad and say to everybody, guys, you can connect here and hack it. If you can make disaster, you will get price. <laughs> <laughs> If you will find zero day, it's your zero day, but please follow responsible disclosure. So for two days of positive hack days forum, uh, guys and uh, girls found more than 10 zero days in uh, Indusoft, in um, Sematic, in uh, IPC, RTU, uh, IPC does RTU, it's um, Taiwan in RTU, uh, it's like a no name. So now responsible disclosure in progress, waiting for the fixes. Uh, so uh, we're talking about uh, vulnerabilities and I want uh, to talk about uh, math. Uh, sometimes math not so hard science. So in this case, we submitted about uh, 10 vulnerabilities, nine vulnerabilities to vendor, uh, and get response that all vulnerabilities is, is fixed. But in advisory, we found only two. I don't know, uh, shall we trust vendor? Maybe not, but what I want to highlight, uh, sometimes it's very bad idea to create a false feeling of safety. Because uh, if somebody, read with advisory, he can say, okay, is CVE 6.2, it's not very important, I will not update this system. But in reality, several remote uh, code execution without authentication is here. So it's better to speak the truth. Postscriptum, very long postscriptum. Uh, Anybody uh, here know the difference between picture one and picture two? Uh, okay, different question. What is bad, one or two? Green light or yellow light? Somebody? Green, okay. First who say green have special price. I will say why. Uh, let's talk about uh, functional safety, because you know now we're speaking about vulnerability. Okay, we root, who? but when you are talking with uh, industrial people, they say, and so on. So, so what? Okay, you root, but I have a special uh, C system, I have special protection system, which does not allow disaster. I want to demonstrate how very simple vulnerabilities can uh, lead to very serious problems. First, uh, super heavy trains. I think you know what is super heavy trains. It's very big trains with uh, several locomotives which uh, sometimes synchronize engines by the radio channel. One on the at beginning, one in the middle, always at the end, and they synchronize engines and uh, uh, brakes via radio channel. Why? Uh, we do it because um, we need run uh, synchronously. So let's imagine that somebody run, run a small radio jammer. And it's a very long device with several uh, locomotives. And we uh, run, uh, st starts run asynchronously and train just 
goals in different dimensions. So, uh, also, it's a very interesting answer. I, typically, you can get it if you speak with uh, industrial people about CO4. Anybody here uh, know what is uh, safety integrity layers? Thinks a lot of people, yeah. So, when you say, okay, you have problem, we have CO4, we don't care. What is CO4? It's safety integrity layer. It's uh, demonstrate a probability of failure uh, for different process. Uh, it can be the probability of error on demand when you ask in system. Uh, if it's continuous process, it's probability of failure per hour. You can see what this is very big number. So, so, so probability of failure very small number. So, if this system really have CO4, it uh, should not break ever. But if we get root on this system in 50 minutes, does it still have still four? My answer, no. And I have a very interesting discussion with a developer of uh, one system. After demonstration, like uh, I can, uh, our team can uh, change the road uh, and manage switch. Uh, on CO4 certificate system, uh, he said, you know, this is not my system. I saw you upload wrong firmware. You rooted and upload wrong firmware, and now this is no my system. Before you rooted, it was my system. Uh, you know, it's like with people. Uh, sometimes in Amok or uh, in, uh, you know, uh, special kind of a mindset, you can do very bad things, but this is not you, and this not my system anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think now we know the difference. A green light is bad. Why? Because of green light, train will go on high speed to the curve. And sometimes it can be very bad. E on yellow light, it will drop speed and move more slowly. And real postscriptum. Uh, I think a lot of people here know what is network convergence. So it's uh, especially in telecom environment when different uh, type of communication protocol goes to the same uh, basic like IPv6 or IPv4 uh, and PSTN goes to IP and mobile goes for 3G and so on, so on. So all different systems connected together using same, same basic. Uh, but what we see at the moment, it's uh, operation technology uh, convergence. We see that modern smart grid use protocols and uh, technologies from ICS, uh, sometimes may, uh, mobile connections, sometimes billing and payment to uh, understand how many power you generate, uh, and so on, so on, cloud technology. So we see uh, like different technologies come uh, together uh, to maybe uh, make our uh, world better. And uh, for last year, we heard a lot of talk uh, on different conferences. For instance, on Black Hat, we spoke about how to hack ATM. Uh, in Paxsec in Tokyo, we spoke about how to get root via SMS. And uh, also, we spoke about uh, the great train cyber robbery on FOSIX. Uh, but you know all this about the, uh, about uh, same things. We cannot say at the moment why, because we don't know yet. But what we know, uh, our world now, it's very complex and very gentle things. So let's uh, invest, let's use our power to keep it safe. Uh, maybe not safe because it's too hard, but at least peaceful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sergei and Alexander.
Now for the questions, could you please line up at the microphones here in the middle of the room? And uh, as I can see, we have no questions from the internet, nothing from IRC. Thank you, Triloader, for monitoring the internet or a signal angel. How about questions from the room? Yes, uh, microphone number one, please. Yeah, hello, my name is Dirk Möbius. I'm working as a software developer in railway with technologies. And I would just like to add concerning the, the, the level four safety level. Yes, this is against failure. Yes, everything which is currently in railway technology implemented is against failure, not against sabotage. If you, if you would, maybe we can take later about yeah, work. Yeah, yeah? I, uh, I, I understand. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. The uh, safety don't uh, uh, think about the people. If, if, if you know <coughs> how, how railway technology works, you can sabotage every frame from Excel counters to point machines. You can crash any train. Yes, because at least you're going to the hardware and disconnect the wires, yeah? So it's about detecting failures, not about uh, being able to prevent sabotage. Not yet, we're working on it, but that's another talk. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I understood you absolutely, because you know, which is why I, uh, when I talk with uh, people who work in the industrial system, mm -hmm. with industrial system, I prefer use not uh, safety or security, or in the information security. I mm -hmm. prefer to use term uh, cyber security. Yeah. It's uh, like a combination of uh, safety, industry security, and information security. And you can demonstrate how information mm. security mm. can broke security features, safety features, uh, put it on the uh, it, process row. Just like, let's, let's, let's talk after the talk Okay, bit, thank yeah? you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions from the room? Nobody lined up at a microphone. Well, this is the time to say thank you very much again. Thank, thank you. you Alexander, Sergey. Thank you. Thank you.